So, hi guys. Um, basically, good news. We've got a firmware update from Sony on the RX10 Mark IV. So, I'm just going to do the update now while we are, you know, as I'm recording. So, I haven't done mine yet. I'm just about to now. So, basically, just make sure your camera is fully charged um, and you've got the right cable to plug into your computer. Um, I'm a PC user, so obviously if you are a Mac user, whatever, you need to follow the instructions on that rather than the, the PC version. Um, basically, so what you need to do is, I've just done it the really quick way of finding the update, is just type in Google, um, Sony RX10 Mark IV um, firmware up update or upgrade, and it basically just finds it, and then you just find, make sure you go logging on to the um, Sony website so we're on the sony.co.uk website so if you're in America or anywhere else it probably be slightly different but a .com probably um, anyway so as you can see here we've got uh, a few bit of information here but we're going to go to downloads and it's showing uh, firmware update version 2.0 go away typical um, and uh, basically yeah we're just going to do that one there obviously you've got the Mac version there, got some other um, programs or whatever, you've got the raw raw drivers there, so if you need the raw driver um, for your computer it's there, and the remote view um, and other software from Sony there. So we're going we're gonna to go and do the update here, so we're going to click on there, about the download, so benefits, so initial about the, the actual upgrade is basically adds what we get on the Sony A7R4 and uh, which I'm using um, the A9 uh, A92 and uh, I think the A6400 possibly something like that um, but basically we're going to get faster autofocus and it, now it obviously recognizes animals as well um, so and the real-time autofocus is is really cool so it's much much more accurate than before. Um, it just shows you how up to date or ahead of its time the RX10 Mark IV is. So, you know, we've had it, well, I've had mine over two years now, two years and a month. Um, and, you know, this is why we, we haven't had a new version. So the RX10 Mark V as, as, as such obviously hasn't come out because they know they can squeeze a bit more out of it. So, you know, it looks, uh, you know, it's still a very, very good camera. So anyway, so it obviously improves the stability of the camera and obviously the, uh, the I so now you can actually operate the IAF without pushing the secondary button at the same time, which you get very used to, and it just works really, really well. Um, obviously, you can't detect animals and humans at the same time, so you have to flick over, uh, either have a dedicated button or in your the FN menu uh, button, just add a, a sort of toggle in between there. Um, and obviously it says eye detection may not be possible depending on the environment, animal type or movement of the animal. It works bloody well anyway. Um, I was very impressed with it. So, But obviously it's not perfect um, because there's so much there. So anyway, we're going to click download. Read all the uh, the gump. Yes, of course we are. Um, and then it's downloading. So basically uh, it's downloaded. I've just jumped a bit there. I've just opened open the folder and it's extracted it so basically you need to turn the plug of the camera in so on the left hand side of the RX10 Mark IV you've got the two rubber flaps if you open the bottom one the the, the sort of the upper um, plug which is the USB um, plug is the bottom one is the HDMI and the the upper one is the one you want to plug into um, and then the flap above that is the microphone and the, the headphone jack so you don't need to worry about that uh, so you plug it in Turn the camera on, and it should hopefully go USB mode connecting. Um, I don't want it in MTP, I want it in what's it say? Mass storage. So I'm going to unplug it because it doesn't like that. Going to go into uh, menu and we need to go over to the toolbox, I think it is. We're going to find it in a second. Uh, USB connection. So you're on page, you're in the toolbox, and you're on set, it's called setup uh, page number three. Down the bottom it says USB connection. Mine was still in auto, so I've never actually plugged 
the uh, camera into the computer before and then we just go down from auto to mass storage come out of the menu and then plug it back in so if you have the same issue that's what you need to do so now I've plugged it back in now it's saying USB mode connecting mass storage so here we go so we just need to click next now there we go so it's now verifying the connection with the camera check the version so my version originally was obviously version 1 verify, verify the version of the update information on the bottom left hand corner so we're going from version 1 to version 2 very simple so we click next it will automatically now run the update it's very very simple um, probably almost identical on a Mac um, with no, no issues whatsoever this is how easy it is um, so we've just got to wait now doesn't take all that long normally so yeah um, be interesting to see because I um, will do some tests on it try the animals out and things like that um, and see if the autofocus is noticeably quicker it's been very fast anyway um, because obviously a lot of the camera derived physically inside from the A9 so um, algorithms obviously probably some of the chipset um, the hardware inside as well because you don't you don't I know, I know it's scaled down um, but the technology is there so basically you don't get any blackout at all when you're shooting 24 frames per second um, and it'd be interesting if it's actually reduced the 24 to uh, 20 because it, you know it may not be able to do 24 anymore depending on if it's auto focusing differently who knows um, not that we can really calculate that very easily but uh, it's still ridiculously fast anyway straight out of the can so um, but version 2 should hopefully make it that much better um, so it's still updating it's not taken all that long um, obviously if you're watching this now just skip along until you see the green bar being full and then obviously you can skip the boring bit uh, but uh, yeah I mean this camera was obviously eighteen hundred pounds or about eighteen hundred dollars when it first came out two years ago and to be honest it's one of the best cameras I've ever owned um, yes we know it struggles a little bit with high ISO and low light and things like that but when you're shooting in nice light and you can keep it down at ISO 100 or thereabouts the photos that come from it are absolutely stellar they're really really good the speed it focuses and follows things already before even this update um, we're still blue my mind down two years down the line so it's been a extremely useful tool um, even using utilizing the HFR mode which is the high frame rate which is a slow motion video um, I've used many times which is a really really cool bit of kit um, you know and you've got that massive lens the 24 to 600 so um, and being f4 it allows you to shoot lower ISOs at 600 mil than you would do if you were using say the a7r4 with a 600 millimeter f5.6 or 6.3 lens on so you know you have some benefits there and for me personally it sits in my bag next to the other cameras and it's there to grab any time I need it and the amount of shots I've got compared to previously um, is insane because you haven't got to change the lens so the sheer speed and efficiency it really really is some of the shots I've got where I would never ever would have got the shot um, if I had to change lenses you know if you had a wide angle on the on the uh, a7r4 for example and you had to swap over quickly to having the uh, the big lens on um, I would have missed the shot where I've literally just taken the you know the RX10 Mark IV out turn it on zzz, done got the shot gone home kind of thing um, because a lot of the times if, especially if you're going for a walk and you're just enjoying life um, and uh, you know you some things happen but the camera's just turned itself back on we've got the finished bit and that was it it's turned itself back off so I'm going to shut the camera down just double check while we're still on go to the toolbox again in the menu and go to page 6 on the, uh, the toolbox version 2.0 so 
that's that guys very very simple to do took only a few minutes um, and that's it so any other questions if you need some help with the RX10 Mark IV feel free to ask um, below um, or in any, in any other videos that I've done I'm happy to try and assist you if you've got any troubles with anything um, but uh, keep enjoying the camera and uh, I certainly am even two years down the line it's probably the, the camera I've used the most in a sh you know over a long period of time of ownership of a particular camera so uh, I know I use the full frame stuff as well but um, for everyday use and obviously for wildlife and stuff like that it's absolutely fabulous because it's lightweight quick and uh, does a really really good job and the images that come out of it are very very sharp so anyway I should be testing it over the next few days to see how much the uh, AF the, well, the autofocus uh, has changed um, and uh, go from there see if there's any other things that they've uh, sneaked in and not told us about so anyway guys please subscribe please click the notification bell and I'll see you soon